Hello, my name is Sonan. I am from Telecommunication, UCOM. Um, we are, we, we, um, I will say that we are the sponsors of the change because we practice it. So now it's very interesting to know it theoretically as well. Vahe Babayan from UCOM Armenia. Um, I'm leading frontline staff of UCOM. Um, so the expectation is, as we are uh, every time and uh, very changeable company in Armenia. So to understand how how to lead the staff to to go with the changes uh, to um, to to have on time changes. Hello, my name is Anna. I'm, uh, I'm working at uh, the Alexander Luxury Collection Hotel Yerevan, hospitality field. Uh, so expectation uh, to learn something new regarding uh, the topic. Okay, cool. uh, can I speak in, English, uh, in Russian? David Arayan, Tarut Karna Pagetsin Kambinat, HR Trainer Rabot, Yajda, Pauchitis Opet, Navish Katori, Mosna, Nidrits, Karna Pagetsin Kambinat, Kak, Navish AD. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Рубен, я из компании Ucom, я из отдела продаж. Что я ожидаю от этого мастер-класса, что узнать что-нибудь новое в сфере руководства стафом. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Levon. I work at Ucom as well, where telecommunication company providing internet, TV, uh, and what about expectations? Uh, I want to learn how to interact with changes. Thank you too. Hello, my name is Anna Torosian. Uh, I work for UCOM, and uh, my presentation I want uh, say a new way for changes. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Анна, я тоже из Юкома, из департамента HR. Мне интересно новые методы, какие методы можно использовать при изменениях в компании с ролью, главной ролью, какую роль может играть HR именно в этих изменениях. Hello, my name is Hasmik. I'm uh, the HR manager of a group of companies and the industries are very different luxury retail car dealer entertainment property development <laughs> agribusiness etc so uh, i'd like to know about the cooperation between change sponsors and change resistors if it possible Okay, uh, another Anna in the room. <laughs> I'm also Anna, I work for uh, Grant Thornton uh, Audit and Business Advisory Company as a uh, people and culture manager. I uh, expectations from this workshop is really to learn how to work the, with change sponsors, some techniques, methods, or approaches because um, they are, I guess, without sponsor, we can't uh, implement and start a change. So I really want to know how to work with the change sponsors. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Sona. I'm heading HR department of KPMG Armenia, actually providing audit tax and advisory services. Uh, actually, the topic was quite interesting, and uh, the main... Uh, Interesting part for me, I guess, will be the role of sponsors within change. What are the responsibilities and how it works? Hi, I'm Linda Gamova. I guess we'll listen to others, but I represent different area. I mean, the sector, which is church. It's non-profit, totally different. 
so I work for Caritas, Caritas Internationales, and you have Caritas Poland in Poland. So I'm just interested how the change in private sector, at least what I was hearing from you and others, apply to non-profit. <laughs> but generally, it's about people facing the new, and it doesn't matter whether you are a priest, or you are a soldier, or you are a teacher, or you are just an advisor, whoever, or you are a CEO, whenever something happens, you first think about yourself, and about your role and your future. So that's why I answered this way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am Goara Rutsinian from Converse Bank. Um, I'm leading the operational department uh, of bank, and I hope uh, to learn the new ways, new methods, and the new techniques of uh, change management in banking sector. Thank you. Добрый день, меня зовут Наира. Я представляю Grand Holding. Я HR менеджер и заинтересована в этой конференции, так как хочу изменить себя и представить изменения в компании в HR в области. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Армен, я представляю онлайн платформу для э, тренингов и продвижения своих тренингов SkillAM. Я являюсь там IT-проект-менеджером, и на данный момент мы организуем семинар Брайана Трейси в Армении. Э, вот, э, почему я пришел сюда? Для того, чтобы как, э, что внедрить в свою команду, в менеджмент, и как это поменять. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Армен. Я HR менеджер Arm Business Bank. Так как банк не маленький, он насчитывает около 900 тысяч штат и свыше 50 филиалов по всей Армении, включая Арцах. Мне хочется, мне интересно конкретные, какие, путем каких конкретных инструментов осуществляется change management. Спасибо. Hello everyone, I'm Zinaida Hakopian. I'm working at the Armenian Missionary Association of America. And I, am, I just want to know the new techniques, uh, new methods, and also new in instruments uh, which involved in HR management now, and which I can use to, um, after. Thank you. Good morning, I am Anna Stepanian, uh, representing Synergy International Systems, an IT company, and I'm heading the HR department. So um, my main expectations are how to deal with, um, how to identify and deal with chain sponsors. Hi, my name is Gayane. I'm uh, heading HR department at the Central Bank of Armenia. Uh, this is a very interesting topic, and my expectation is to understand how to find, or as Anna said, identify change sponsors, and how to attract and work with them. Thank you. So, guys, I can see that we have here a lot of expectations toward how to lead the change generally. But I would like to focus on this session, especially on these parts of expectations that are related to finding the sponsor and working with a sponsor. So for today, and I, I'm really happy from these expectations that you have. No, no, I, it's okay, it's working. I just make it black so that it doesn't <laughs> you know, kill my eyes. Okay, thank you so much. But I, I have to say it, you know, the stuff here is wonderful, really. For anything, even if you don't think about it, they are there, so I, I appreciate it so much, really. I just wanted to say it, thank you. So <clears throat> anyway. Um, when we think about a change, it's like about a child. Change requires not only funding, but also attention. Do you agree with this? Whenever we would like to merge with other company, or we bought just the company and we would like to merge it with what we have, 
Can you do it without support of somebody who really cares on the top? It's not possible. When we would like to make something like new process design or, or reorganization or restructuring or we implement company-wide IT system, then people ask, okay, who of the top management is behind that? And if they don't receive the right answer, I mean, the answer is, oh, we don't know, or, well, IT is implementing something, HR is implementing something. Yes, but okay, but who from the board stands behind this? And if this answer is not clear, then I would say, good luck for those who want to implement it. I would not be, I would not like to be among them. Because if you want to do something <laughs> I can say. So then, then you just destroy his, uh, you know, property, and he can be angry. So he needs to first introduce the change. He needs to first label the vision to be the face of the change. And this is, in fact, a huge challenge, because as I can hear from what you say, you work mostly internally for your companies. Some are advisors, but majority of you have internal roles. And then it's a challenge to go to senior executive and tell him, Mr. President or Mr. Chief Sales Officer or Chief Marketing Officer, you should be the face of this change. Okay, I have many things to do, he would say in the best case. <laughs> He can, he can even not listen to us. So it's really interested, interesting how we having internal role and being dependent on these guys, how we can influence them so that they, have posit they can have positive influence on project. That's why really this is crucial. And I would like to make this masterclass uh, not very broad discussion about sponsors. I just would like to give you a little bit of big picture helicopter view, but also I'd like to focus on very concrete applications. So it's not going to change the world, but I hope at least it will, so my expectation would be that you can apply something when you leave this room, whatever it is. Hopefully it will be connected with the topic of what I say, but <laughs> I just would like you to, do, to be able to do something differently, to do something more, to do something for, for the benefit of, of you and your company. So. What, what the word sponsor mean, by the way? Sponsors from Latin is the one who takes obligation. The one who is saying, I will do this. Sponsoring, in Polish language, for example, it is connected with, the, with money. You know, sponsoring means giving money. And this is very, very flat understanding of sponsorship. Sponsorship is a relationship between somebody who is a sponsor and his project. And I say stronger, his baby. Because as I said about the sponsor, he is a bit like a father. So please imagine what the boy, let's say, turns into if he receives only money from his father, not attention. What do you think? What is the result? Not the one that father would like to. Maybe the boy would be just self-managing person and very good and very ambition, yes. And he will just, in Polish we say, he will uh, grow up for people. He will be just a good man, yes, but it's very unlikely. What is likely, he will just do whatever he wants and he will not make his father proud about himself. So then I would say sponsorship is really serious thing. So please... Keep this in mind, number one. Sponsorship is very, very serious thing, and it's about relationship between the person and the project. So, getting connection with what I said yesterday, change management on the other hand, because sponsorship and change management are the words that I put into the name of the workshop, so it should have some link. So as majority of CEOs expect change management to be core competency of their organization, then we have some chance. Because if we connect it wisely between the changes 
and the role of sponsor, then we, have some, we can have some arguments how to approach sponsors. And as I said yesterday, working with sponsors is one of the top three ideas how to take leading role in the change as an HR. So for HR, it's very natural on one hand. On the other hand, it's really great ground to show results. Also, we should, be, we should remember that those sandwich people in the middle of the organization need somehow to be influenced by the sponsor. So not only we should work with the sponsor, but we should work with the sponsor so that he can work with others. That's why it's important. And of course, employees as well. So I would like to start with the fairy tale that I hope is going to illustrate a bit these things like sponsorship and change management. So, and also project management, because I would say that whether you name something a project or it's just a task, it doesn't matter how you name it, it means that projects bring change to the way people work. Like I said yesterday, the project of implementing ERP system in the train manufacturer was impacting shop floor people and purchasing department people and others as well. Implementing e-banking in the banking industry had impact directly on the work of people. So the, pro the big projects, the big transformation or smaller projects impact people. That's why I would like to illustrate this connection between the change, the sponsor role, and the project and the change management. So I would kindly ask you to uh, form, a, so form groups of three people. So please, you will be group number one, three of you. You will be group number two. You are group number three. And you are group number one again. Yes, please remember the numbers. You are number two. And you are three of you, yes. You are number three. You are number one. You are number two. And you are number three, including you, yes. <laughs> Okay. No, 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 no. Please, the, the groups sit as you sit right now. I don't want to make any, any noise, but it's important the number because group number one, please reflect to the topic of the captain's mistakes. So those who are in groups number one, please discuss within your, uh, your single small groups after I show you the fairy tale. What kind of mistakes captain made? Whoever captain is, you will learn. Then groups number two, yes, like you and some others, please pay attention to what the king could have done differently. And groups number three, think about villagers. What was their role in the success of the whole thing? Okay? So please keep these <coughs> questions in mind. And once I will tell you the fairy tale, because fairy tale is either about to watch as a movie or to be told, you know. I will use, as today is 9,899, 799 anniversary of Yerevan, probably 2,000 years ago people were not watching TV for fairy tale. They were talking about fairy tales. That's why I will tell you fairy tale. Okay? A bit more traditional way. So guys. You remember maybe the song of Madonna, yes? Long, long time ago, yeah? I don't sing nice, but anyway, it was also long, long time ago. There was a brave captain. Maybe some of you watched the series Vikings, Ragnar Lodbrok, says it something? Yes? Did, did you like it? Yeah, I, I like it too. So anyway, these were the times, and these were probably the times of Vikings, and what Vikings did with their boats, they were just traveling, but not for trade. <laughs> just they, whenever they went, they just took what was there. They didn't ask, they didn't pay, <laughs> yes? It was more rubbery than touristic visit. So it was very important to have very fast ships. And once the captain comes to the king saying, dear king, I heard from some wise people that it is possible to build a new ship. This ship does not have only sails, but this ship has some sticks that make it faster. The king said, sticks you mean? What, what do you mean by sticks? 
Uh, there are people who sit on the boat, holes, you know, in the sides of the ship, and then they moving the sticks, they just push water. So it gives an extra power to the ship. Well, King said, Does, it, it looks really interesting. So what can I gain from this, King says, King asks. And the captain says, probably, as I have rough calculations, it will help our crew to sail one day quicker for the continent. And one day quicker, they can go back. Oh, so King said, it's really something, because you know, one day meant concrete uh, gain, and they could visit other <laughs> others more, more frequently. They could rob more frequently, yes, they could do their job more frequently. And they could be faster running away, you know, after somebody is trying to chase them. The captain said, but only I need 100 people who would use these sticks. And dear king, we would call them rowers. Though, and and this, this stick is named row. Okay. King says, whatever. I don't mind, you know. <laughs> I'm not the king because I like encyclopedia. I'm just the king because I like fast boats. So king said, for your effort, if you are successful, I will really be generous. For every hour that your ship sa is saving, I will pay you 1,000 golden coins. 1,000 golden coins for every hour. So, but only for free races. Let's not be, you will not be the shareholder of my country, but I will just give you the free <laughs> races. Okay, so then the potential gain of captain was like 24,000 golden coins a, a, a day, yes, a race. So it was pretty, pretty okay. And then, <clears throat> The, then, then the captain received some money from the king, and he went to gather some craftsmen just to make a ship. You know, some woodcutters, some some other uh, people who can make a boat, like Loki in Vikings, yeah, the boatman, boat maker. So, <clears throat> when he went, and he get to these people, he had to pay the money. So first month, it costed him 10,000 golden coins. Then by the end of the first month, he was looking at his invoices. I don't know how invoices in Vikings time was, were looking like, but anyway, he calculated and he said, okay, dear king, I need extra 5,000 for the next month. King said, is that all? Dear king, I don't know, I will come the next month. So he came and the next month he needed 4,000 more. Okay, but, by the end of month number four, the ship was, in month four, sorry, and, at the, and the beginning of month four, the ship was ready. Super cool. And then, you know, what happens when the ship is ready? Then the ship can just go away, can, can sail. Well, <laughs> it was not that easy because captain tried to get the crew, but people had just no idea what is happening on the, on the shore on, at, at the dock? Because they saw a ship who had just much lower sides and the sides had holes. So people were saying, what the hell is that? The water will go inside. Yeah, so we will draw. Ooh. But there were 20 people who were brave enough to apply for the first race, to get recruited. Okay, but 20 instead of 100, it's not enough. It's like our engine in the car working on 20% of power. So the gain was not 24 hours, just four hours. But the king did not ha cut captain's head because he saw, well, only 20 people and four hours, let's give him some more life. <laughs> let's give him some more trial. So for the next uh, race, the captain get more people, and King went once on the street saying, dear people, this is a really great thing, you apply. So they collected more people, they recruited 60. Still, they were not trained very well. And you know, they were hitting each other's row and so on, but they gained seven hours. And finally, the King said, okay, it looks good. So he went through the whole village, he made town hall meetings with their with his people, 
telling guys, this is really wonderful, this is our future, really, I will, I will give you some reward and so on. So they collected 100 people and also Captain <coughs> found the idea of putting drummer boy on the boat so that the boy could give the rhythm so that the rowers could row easily and don't hit each other's rows. So with this kind of crew, recruited and trained, they gained even more than 24 hours. So when the ship went back, everybody was like, wow, this is wonderful. And now everybody wanted to be you know, the, the owner of this idea. Yes, we knew it was great, of course. And the captain was rewarded by the money and everybody was living long, happily, and ever, long ever after. So then, please remember one thing, that the fourth month ship was staying in the dock, not sailing. Hmm? And only fifth month it started to sail. So then guys, please come back to your questions. What was the mistake of captain? What king could have done differently? And what was the role of villagers in this? So please discuss, like three minutes maybe, and then we will talk together. like majority of teams are ready. Yes, you're ready, all right, okay, cool. 
Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, the, the changes are done on the same ship that, uh, that Captain used. It was, it, it was the new ship. Uh, Okay, guys, I think it's enough of the discussion. You know, if you tell... <laughs> okay. Guys, I think if you tell your children or your parents that you have been discussing the fairy tale <laughs> on Saturday morning, then... <laughs> Or playing yes quest, <laughs> maybe they will not believe. But anyway, all right. Let's start with the the captain. What kind of mistakes the captain made? So groups number one. I encourage every representative of group number one to speak. Just no order. Whoever wants to start, but just groups number one only for the captain. Yeah. So what kind of mistakes? Yes, please go on. Uh huh. Oh, okay, guys, please, please, please. Shh. Let's listen. Let's listen. Let's, oh. <laughs> Closer. Ah, pass, pass the microphone. Oh, okay. Okay, um, uh, we identified that the main uh, mistake of the captain was in the implementation phase. He wasn't, he planned the phase, but it wasn't carried uh, out and planned very thoroughly. So he could start the construction and the crew recruitment process simultaneously. Uh, which he didn't uh, do, and also the communication. He uh, don't spend much time on communicate the idea to uh, others, so people can get involved. To yeah. easier to find people for the crew. So the uh, pro um, planning phase, uh, implementation phase, to start the process simultaneously and communicate uh, the idea to other uh, people. Not to lose time. Cool. Thank you so much. How about others? Do you want to add something? Yes? Yeah. Uh, we, we have also think that uh, there was a... Speak to the microphone. Oh, okay. There was a problem on uh, planning stage as well, as there are other crews, uh, other ships uh, with the same logic build. He can share the best practices, how, how, to, how to build the build, the, the, the ship, and... Uh, who have the correct planning uh, of the project. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, okay, go on. Uh, we also saw some uh, lack of engagement sandwich people. So he did not engage Yes, yes, he didn't engage the sandwich people. Yes, yes, <laughs> Uh, yeah, mi middle level wasn't involved, so uh, it will m make um, easier to communicate, to engage, and uh, not to lose time. By the way, who was the middle in this society? Uh, rowers. The sandwich people, who were they in, in this Viking time, you think? In the Viking village. Uh, Viking village. <laughs> no, probably you don't remember it, but just... <laughs> Yes, some priests, yes. Some priests, some, uh, uh, yes, wise men or some wizards, wizards kahunas. But maybe, you know, maybe also there are some elder people, right? You know, grandfathers, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Some who cannot sail by themselves. So ambassadors, kind of. Yes, and just pater familia. Yes, you can say elder people also can influence. Yes, you're right. Cool, thank you so much. So this is with the captain, and the conclusion is he just did not sell the idea. Yes, he paid attention to building the ship, but he did not pay attention how to sell the idea to others, communicate, to touch other people, and to plan maybe to get some best practices from other ships. Yes, exactly. And of course, nothing about involving the sponsor, but the king, let's come to the king right now. So what uh, king could have done differently? Groups number two, please. Мы думаем, как уже было озвучено до меня, здесь была изначальная ошибка планирования в трех областях, в плане инвестирования, в плане времени разработки и в плане, в плане короля, который не был внимательный за весь этот период 
потому что затраты были неравномерными. неравномерными. Вторая ошибка была спонсорство, поскольку спонсорство это не только, как вы уже сказали в начале лекции, спонсорство это не только выделение средств, это еще и будет привлекать другие фабрики. Uh, one was just more technical about the money and, and about yes how he how he founded it, but the other one was his blessing to this project, you can say yes in front of people, yeah, uh, using his power actually using his influence that he had naturally. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, in the beginning he was very active, got enthusiastic about the impact, about the requirements. With with the captain, right. So maybe more conversation with him and the sandwich people, etc., would help him understand what is his role, other than sponsoring, giving money, looking at the deadline, but what more he can do, because in the end, he allowed himself to be in the community, to go through the dirty roads and to talk to the people to encourage them. He could have done it from before. We can say that he could just do something, and not only in front of captain, but in front of people, and just do, not only talk. Okay, good. You wanted also to say something. Actually, the same thing. I think that the king should have asked many questions before um, giving uh, his... Uh, uh, Agreement, uh, agreement, uh, and he should have asked more questions. Who should be involved? What was his role? What could be his role in uh, in the yeah ap apart from giving money, yeah. and also uh, following some uh, like some controlling or how to say during the period because this is also important for the implementation. So, yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. No, right now I'm in the Vikings time. <laughs> Just because he could have found other sponsors like his wife, uh, queen, his uh, nephews and princesses and the royal family. The royal family. Yeah, council, whatever. Yeah. Right, so to yeah, encourage and engage other sponsors, not himself. Right. Anything else about this one? So let's go to villagers, and what was the role of villagers, please? Yes, okay, and then you. Thank you. Uh, so as uh, our team understands the fairy tale, uh, the villagers um, have the most important role in this fairy tale, um, because... Well, <laughs> interesting. Uh, because uh, without the villagers, uh, the king and the captain can't apply Yes, their, yeah, can't but apply but their idea, and yeah. um, the, as we understand, the way to success, the most important way to success, is teamwork of uh, villagers. Yes. So, yes, exactly. And then, yes, you want to say something? We talk together um, with my team, and uh, we get that uh, besides of uh, the mistakes done uh, by. Uh, first and first two points: uh, the our villagers um, are um, accepted the changes. They are uh, they believe the for the uh, good result, and um, um, they they have been um, trained. They they have accepted to be trained, and um, they have cooperated for success um, goal, and. Um, they get the project uh, to be succeeded, uh, and the role of villagers are um, the best, most most important for Absolutely. the project. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Uh, well, the role of uh, villagers was um, that they had the courage, the first group of uh, villagers had the courage to go through that change. Uh, in other words, um, that 20 people were change agents, uh, who um, decided to take that challenge. Thank you very much. Anyway, whatever you say, guys, you say, without the villagers, the ship is not moving. Or without enough well-trained villagers, the ship is not achieving expected gain. So, in other words, we can say that the project management, in this case, 
was what? Building the ship. And the change management was? Recruiting and preparing the crew, exactly. So if we think about project and change management link, this is first what I said, this is it. Project is about delivering project product, as we say in Prince 2 methodology, for example, on project management. And the change is to get the people who work differently, because probably previously you can imagine even not knowing how it was working, that when they were sailing, only few of them were working and the rest was lying on the deck and resting. And now every Viking should row. So it's a change for them. And also they cannot row individually. They need to have more teamwork, like these guys on Formula One Ferrari team or McLaren, I don't remember which one was that, the red suits, yes. The, yeah. So then we have the change management, which means we need to get these people who will work differently. And this is the connection between project and change management. So we can say that once we understand it better, then we can roles. And this role thing is really important because what you can see in the organization, just let's come back to our times just for a second. In the organization, on the top, you have, let's think this is, let's say, regular structure of the organization. Some people on the top who are sponsors, who are, because as, as somebody of you say, there is not only one sponsor, there can be more sponsors who are, let's say, sponsoring on their level. For example, there is CEO, the president, but he has chief marketing officer, and the chief marketing officer will be sponsor for marketing department. And then the sales, executive will be the sponsor for all sales regions. And then the manufacturing, chief manufacturing or chief operating officer would be the sponsor for operations. And if the company is bigger, you can have operations in many countries. So country managers also can be sponsors for their countries. That's why it's perfect. We can have more sponsors and sponsor definition here is the one who makes sure that on his organization, the, the project will be realized, will be uh, implemented, and the one who has enough influence to do it. So usually these are top managers. So then we have sandwich people, yes, and then we have employees, and usually <clears throat> what we say is that the change is what the top wants the middle to do to the down, to the bottom of the organization. So as in the fairy tale, King, and sponsors take project managers to do the job, yes, to do the technical part. And then it's really important to understand who has what kind of role. Because the success starts from understanding what is the link between project and change, which means whom we should take care of, these kind of people, and then who should do this. The, question, the next question is who should do this? So please make a simplified definition that everybody who has formal power in the organization middle level managers, supervisors, and sponsors, these people should be the face of change. And this is exactly what you said, the king, guy on the top, should maybe do something with middle level managers so that they can sell the idea, not the project manager. And sometimes in our organizations, we also build a function of change manager, not always, and not in every organization, and sometimes this change management job is a part of project manager's job as well. But anyway, those who work on project and change management are enablers, and those who have formal power over people impacted by the change are face of the change. This is the major distinction of roles. That's why Captain, as a project manager, was not successful in convincing people. He only could pay the craftsmen and could buy his, their time. This was his power only as a project manager. And usually you can say that project managers in your organizations act the same. They don't have formal power over people, yes? They only have some, some influence on their project teams, but the project team is not everybody impacted by the change, only a couple of people. So please keep that in mind. And if you want to be effective working with your sponsors, your first step is to tell them what is this change thing about, to add some 
tasks for on the project, about the crew, and also to help the sponsor to fulfill the role. And the question is, what is the sponsor's role? This is also very important. But before we go to this, I wanted to tell you about one more thing. When we talk with executives about whatever it is, what kind of language they understand best? Results. Digits, numbers, yes? Money, yes, financial impact. Yeah, and, and if we tell them about people, about communication, about development, they are not that happy. Yes, they are not listening. They are switching off their brains immediately. That's why it's good to be able to talk about numbers in relation to change management. And I just wanted to show you right now, with the help of one of you, what was the financial impact of not sufficient change management here in this case. So please, anyone, come here who likes numbers. And we will help this person to prepare a cash flow diagram for the project. Just as simple as that. So please, I will complete the, the template and you come here, whoever wants. I cannot say I have any reward for that, <laughs> but the reward would be you will be, you know, on the movie forever in the internet. Yeah, super, bravo. <laughs> bravo, 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 super, I like it. So here, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So you get two markers, and with one, please, Draw just bars, yes, you know. We, we, yes, we will tell you. Let's let's help. Excuse me, can you please remember your name? Gohad. 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 So let's help Gohad to draw this diagram. What was the let, and let's assume that the expenses were according to the plan. Let's not dig into project. Yes. So first month. Yes. So please draw ten thousand. Yes. Draw draw a bar like this. Yes, and just mark it. Yes, 10,000. Then the second month, five, go on. And not cumulative, no, 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 second month, just like this. Month by, no, 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 here, 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 month by month. Not, not cumulative, mm -hmm. super. And then third month, 4,000. Okay, let's go for 4,000. No, 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 one, third month, just third. Mm -hmm. And then let's assume that according to the plan, how much money captain should have earned? One kilo per one hour, which is 24,000 per every race. And let's assume that one race was one month in one month. So here, please draw 24 on plus. Yes? Here, 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 here. No, here, for the, for the next month. Because, because it should be in the fourth month, yes? When the ship is ready. Mm -hmm. here, here, just here. Uh -huh. And then how many months? Three. three months, yes, three races, so, exactly, cool. Mm -hmm. And then put, put a, a one, two, three, yes, okay, we have three. And then take the red one and indicate how much money was earned, ultimately. Okay, so when the captain started earning money? Yes, exactly. Not the first month when the ship was ready because there was no crew. Yes? So please start, <coughs> start drawing the here. And how much money? Here, here, here. From for 7,000. Yes, so go for seven plus. Yes. I'm just checking if you look at the table. <laughs> so how many thousand finally? 4,000. Yes, and make it a bar like this. Yes, exactly. Another one? <clears throat> Next one? Seven. seven. Now it's seven. Yes, please. Yes, and then? More than 24. Yes, so please. Yes, exactly. Make it. Mm. So, guys, even if you are not financial experts, what would you say about the second cash flow, the, the realized cash flow, the red one versus the green one? What can be said? What would you say? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, is it the 20? Um, how, how does it look from, from, from the distance? How does it look? 
it's, it's um, by figures uh, that uh, the earns in seventh month is more, um, and the cash flow for other months uh, will be growth. But, uh, but here, here, here prices, yes. <laughs> but here, um, I think expenses of uh, more than uh, profit here. Yeah. Yes, guys. We but but expectations are more. Uh, exactly. It was uh, not that as expected. And then, uh, cheers for Gohar. Bravo. Thank you so much. Thank you. And guys, we can just say that the money was less and later. If you tell this your chief financial officer that the project will deliver results later and less, what is he going to say? No, exactly. No project like that. You change assumptions or we don't make the project. So guys, here you can see the link between the financial result of the project and change management. Because what was the reason of the project to fail? Lack of proper change management, because project management was not the key here. He built the ship on time, even if there was some trouble with money and so on. He finally built the ship, but he did not prepare the crew, recruit and train the crew. So this is the way we can talk about value of change management. Another way of convincing our sponsor to, sponsors to do something, which is will summarize the, the masterclass with the roles of the sponsor, but before that, Let's talk about one more way. You can ask yourself how many, what per percentage of the results of the project will be achieved if people affected by the project change nothing in the way they work. And here, what can we say? What is the link between how, how much of the project result can be achieved without people on board? By this case. Almost nothing, yes? Or maybe just a little like we will take just people by accident, those who don't know why they are on the boat, yes. Maybe they were drunk when they were dropped on the boat. <laughs> we give them rows and, and force them to row, yes. But so this is another way to justify change management. If much is at stake on the project side, depending on people, then you can say it's really worth to pay attention to change management. And then yeah, this is, okay. And then one more thing. When we look at the research on the business projects, but not only in, in profit organization, in hospitals, in governments as well, we can say that people expect some information from some roles in the organization about the change. And you can see the business messages, why the change is needed, the story about the change. Many presenters yesterday were telling about justification of the change, why people should do things differently. You can see from whom people expect this message. These are senior leaders, these are sponsors. So you see, not the project team, not communication specialists, not HR. This is another way to justify why sponsors should do something about the project. And why communication is his job, not only HR people, not only communication. On the other hand, one interesting thing is that please look the personal messages, what's in it for me, what will be the impact on my team, who is expected to deliver? Supervisor. supervisor. Yes, exactly. But who will sell the change to supervisors? Senior leaders, not project manager, not the captain, not us as HR. So what is our role? Our role is to facilitate the role of sponsor, not to replace him. Very often I saw, not only in Poland, in some other countries as well, that HR people were supposed to communicate the change. That sponsor said, you tell the message, you will tell about the restructuring. This is not a good one. This is not a good approach because even if people like you, you don't have power in the organization over people. So the sponsor should be the person with the power. And how this power works, you can see, I'm just showing you a couple of results from this benchmarking study that I presented yesterday as well. And you can see that in these situations when the sponsor was assessed as extremely effective, 
majority of projects deliver results. So then again, we can see the link. And I would just like to recall it from yesterday. With sponsorship is not everything about change management, is a part, but very crucial. But it helps to achieve excellent change management. And when we have excellent change management, six times more projects are successful than when change management is poor. And then, as I said, what is the role? You can say sponsor has very, very simple task of facing the change. You remember maybe from Russian times, Red Square, the Victory Day, Dzień Pobiedy, and parade, and soldiers marching, and tanks, and other equipment, and then people cheering, and then on the high tribune, many officials, and in the middle, Leonid Brezhnev. Kamrat Brezhnev. So, what was he doing during these parades? Do you remember from some movies, maybe? Waving. Waving. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kissing, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> maybe you remember the picture on the Berlin Wall with Honecker, yes? Oh, it was just... Mm. Yes, he was kissing also Polish first secretary, Edward Gerek, as well, the same, yes. <laughs> because Brezhnev has, was also a big guy, so when he hugged like a bear, you know, it was bear hug. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, think about the situation, the same day, the same parade, officials, soldiers, people, and no Brezhnev in the middle. What do you think people would say about this parade? It's not official. What else? Where is the king? Yes. Even if he was old man, kissing like that, not nice, you know, yes? He's not interested, yes, exactly. What is the difference between one situation and the other situation? Just the presence, exactly. So his role is just to show people that it is that he's involved and that it is important. Was he always involved? Some people say that he had doppelgangs. You know, the other Brezhnev, the person who looked like, but was not him. Just many dictators were acting like this to decrease the risk of being killed, yes? So generally, guys, I would say, if you can do nothing with your sponsor, just make him act like a Brezhnev. Be from distance and just wave. Let's be more concrete, of course. That's why I would say A, B, C of Brezhnev. <laughs> A, B, C of the sponsor. And A is for being active and visible throughout the whole project. Active and visible means attending meetings regularly, the project meetings, for example. But also talking with his people about the project. Also, when he drinks coffee with somebody, just asking. Also, when he has Christmas party and he ha he's delivering Christmas wishes, he can say something about this big initiative. Of course, not about every project, but about big significant projects, yes. Make him actively supporting the project. So this is A. Then we have B. I like this thing about building coalition, absolutely. In big organization, and majority of your organizations are pretty big, it's not enough to have one boss on the top, one king who is single sponsor. You need a coalition. And you know that sometimes what is good for one division in the company may not be good for the other one. And sometimes, for example, CEO may be happy to introduce new product. So marketing and sales people will be happy, but production people will not be happy because they need to do something extra, something new. So then, not everybody in the sponsorship coalition, so-called, will support the project. And this is sponsor's role to deal with this. Not a project manager going to the production director saying, ah, Mr. Director or, or Mr. COO, it's really good idea. Please, please help. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. So then sponsorship is needed for building this coalition. And then first, sorry, third one for, stands for C, like, communicating directly with employees about why this change is needed. 
And I'm sure that in your culture, people really, even if don't, they don't maybe necessarily, don't always respect the leaders fully, they really take into account what the leaders say. And if something is important for the leader, then it is likely to be important for the people. If something is not important for the leader, it's very unlikely, yes, to be important for the people. So then your job, as we can see, is to help sponsor to perform these roles. He will not perform it single-handedly, like an actor on the stage. Who is the most famous actor currently in Armenia? George Clooney? No. In Poland, you would never hear the Polish name, probably. Girls would say George Clooney or Brad Pitt or whoever, I don't know. Maybe Ryan Gosling. <laughs> George Clooney. OK. So nobody would say that George Clooney is a poor actor because he does not write a role for him. He does not prepare his suits. He does not prepare the light and the camera. Yes? George Clooney's role is just to perform something which was given by somebody else, and he's prepared by somebody else. He cannot conduct the movie. He cannot make a montage of the movie later on. No, absolutely. He cannot distribute it, but he's just a great actor. And sponsors, please make your sponsors as great actors. For example, for communication directly with employees, you need to prepare them some content to present. You need to challenge them on how to present it to employees. Right now, I, when I go back to Poland, just a day, this is the very same day when I come back, I have a meeting with, uh, the, the, with directors in one bank. They are to deliver, um, they will conduct a workshop with their people about the new change initiative. It's about this DevOps that I mentioned yesterday, an IT team. So they have really huge change, and what they were thinking about to present is we just need to tell people exactly what it is about. Just details, how the work will look like, what kind of trainings they will have. But after the first conversation we had, we realized that we really need to start from why this change is needed. Just exactly communicate technical aspects of the project, but communicate the vision, the story, the idea, exactly. So this is your job to challenge them. And this is what I, what I will be doing with them, by the way. I will just try to make their story important for the people. I will not go on the stage in the beginning of November because they have their, their meeting in, in November. I, I will not do this. Of course, I'm nobody for the people. So then this, this kind of situation, then another one, build a coalition of sponsors. I will show you one picture how the coalition of sponsors may look like. We started a couple of minutes later, so can we still five minutes have, yeah? Just <clears throat> because I would like to, to finish it if you don't mind. So let's see this picture. You, you can see we have people affected by the change. Yes, departments. And then we have sponsor here on the top. So the executive sponsor, we, we would say the most important sponsor, the Brezhnev in this case, would be the person who has all the organization under him. For example, this person would not be appropriately high enough to sponsor the whole change, yes? Because he does not manage manufacturing and finance, yes? So we can say that TJ, because these are initials, can be sponsored for logistics and sales, yes, he can be. Mr. UW can be the sponsor for this part, but for the whole thing, the COO should be the executive sponsor. So then, <clears throat> what we can do, we can prepare such a picture, and what it shows, first it shows who is between the people and the executive sponsor. And this is like mechanical, you know, or, or, or just electrical scheme of circulating the, the uh, electricity. When we have brakes somewhere, there, just, there will be no flow of electricity, yes? So what we need to understand is who will support the change of the sponsorship coalition, between, because these are sponsor coalition members, and who will not support. This is number one. And number two, who can perform the ABC role effectively on his level or her level or not. And we can make a picture, and you can see some letter and number here. What does it mean? A or B 
may mean whether the person is supporting, A, or not supporting, B, which means this sponsor is against the change. But what if the sponsor is neutral? What kind of letter he will receive, A or B? C, there is no C, A or B? Not A, <laughs> what it means not A, it's B. Guys, if somebody is neutral on this level of managerial, it's, it's just hidden resistance. Yeah? So then we divide them into A's or B's. This is number one. And then, number two, we just need to assess their competency level. And the company named Prosci delivers a method on and, and prepared the methodology on change management step by step. I just wanted to finish with, uh, with mentioning this methodology because it gives you step-by-step -step approach also for how to involve sponsors. Of course, this is not the time for us to talk about the methodology itself, but I hope that you will be a little bit aware and willing maybe to investigate more and you will find more for yourself. But anyway, I wanted to just to tell you about one little piece of this methodology, which is named Sponsor Competency Assessment. There is a list of behaviors for each a, B, and C that sponsors should present to have high level of competency. And our job as HR people may be to facilitate increasing of this role efficiency. Of course, how to approach sponsor to coach him a little bit so that he knows how good or how not good he is, it's another story, but you have your secrets how to approach your top executives in your organizations, I'm sure. And many people do like that, they just have the sponsor assessment list because it's just a list of behaviors and they say, okay, let's sit together and please fill it in and we'll see what kind of help I can deliver to you. So then we can divide sponsors for one, two or three, the three groups. One means the one who is very effective as a sponsor, who fulfills majority of the points. Two means he has some gaps and three means it's really not enough. There is a scale for that, but again, this is very technical, but what we would like to come up with are the colors, not only black and white photography, but also colorful. So the colors we take from traffic light system. Red, what does it mean red? Stop, yes, and green, go. Or be careful because of the guy who can cross on red. <laughs> no, green means go, and yellow means be careful, yes? So. Green color is for those sponsors who are A, which means for the change, and one which means very good at sponsors role. So we have green guys. Then A2 means for the change and has some gaps. That's why it's yellow because needs support. And then everybody else is red, which means all B, whoever is neutral or against the change, is red, we have to do something with this person because his team will never change with such approach of the sponsor. And then A3 is also red, why? We say an elephant in Chinese shop. No, 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 a sponsor who cannot perform the role. For example, who, who just will scare people rather than motivate them, who don't see the necessity of playing his role, who does not find time to be with the people, to communicate. And then, guys, you just have a picture, like that. And this is the huge value you can give to your sponsor. This is an example of a tool, because what does this photography say? What, what does this photography say? Yes, only if you... Green, yes, well, it looks like Christmas tree, yes? Well, so it's not, it's not looking very good, but what we can do, and again, concrete hint, what we do, we just have a look and we discuss some hot spots. We don't show this picture to sponsor without any explanation, no, we just need to give him what we think about it, and honestly, what I do with this, I just add an Excel for this which means what are the tasks to be done and by whom and when to make these people yellow and to make these people green. And then from yellow to make them green as well. So for example, what we can see? We can see that primary sponsor is this person. 
So I would say this person is too low in the organization to be primary sponsor. So our first job is to go with this TJ, and you can do it as, as an HR, as a sponsor's coach, and to talk to COO, telling him, Mr. COO, you, you are for the change, A, but you, you have to be the godfather, you have to be Brezhnev, and we should make COO the Brezhnev of this change. Then COO can work with UW, yes? Because UW is B, free. So he's against the change or neutral, so he needs to be supported not by HR, not by project team, not by his colleague, but by his boss, yes? And then if we have these two key points taken care of, we can make UW taking care of this guy, yes? And then you can see the whole thing becomes very easy because these are a couple of tasks to be done. Maybe one more that could be added to this. We can see that many sponsors have, letter, have number three or two, which means sponsor competency is not enough for them. So probably they would just need a training. And just a week before I came here, I was working with, with one Polish construction company with their sponsors for the whole day to teach them their role and to talk with them to fast, maybe teach is not the good word, just to maybe give them some things to think about, give them some challenge about their roles. And the result, by the way, was that they say, wow, we saw our sponsor's role totally differently. Now we know much better what to do. So this is, again, another value that you can give to your sponsors. And then, so that they can perform their role better. And I just would like to finish with this number. Please keep in mind, 58% of sponsors do not understand their role properly. This is what the research say. So if you think that your sponsors are not A1, but maybe A, A2 or 3, it means we are not alone. Majority of executives do not, they just don't, un, they, they underestimate the importance of their presence, of their sponsorship, of their being active and visible, building coalition and communicating. And I hope that with this kind of knowledge and, and awareness of these things, you can be more effective challenger, sparring partner for your sponsor, because sponsorship is success factor number one for the project. So the best result and the most you will get when you start supporting the project with working with the sponsor. And then working with the sponsor is like massaging the body by physiotherapist, you know? Sometimes it's just enough to push a little bit and to change the, the way the bones are put into your organism, uh, into your body, and you feel much better. So this is exactly about some kind of making a massage to organization so that the puzzles are on the right place. And then sponsors, when they are aware of their role, they can influence other sponsors. They can bring the, the importance of the change to the organization then they will probably get involved the middle-level managers, and then middle-level managers will work with people. So, and you, as an HR executive, you may say, I just facilitated the process. And you may be happy with staying in the shadow because these guys should have success. But your, their success is your success. So I really wish you the success. Hopefully, we covered a little bit of the topics that you mentioned. I'm sure not all. Sorry for that, but this is just one hour and a couple of minutes. Any comments for the end? Any takeaways? Any questions? Yes, please. Very quickly, I, all this makes sense, uh, but whoever is engaged, it, there is an importance to realize and take into consideration the organizational culture, the values, traditions, unspoken habits, and all this stuff might influence the strategy we apply. I will just tell you, because this is very important, people keep on asking again and again the same question, how the culture impacts the possibility of using this. And honestly, guys, this is being used in the US, in Europe, in Asia, in China as well, in Australia. But of course, the, spon the, the way the sponsor is expressing his role will be different. Some, in some culture, it will, cultures, it will be more directive. And sponsor will not make a nice stories for the people, will just say, go. And in some organizations, it's enough. In the army, it's, it's changing, but it's also enough. But in some organizations, 
you will just express this role differently. Sponsor may be more participative in the change process, but still the role of the sponsor is the same. So I would say be very aware of the culture, but it's not about to changing the gravity rule, to changing because the gravity rule is like who is the sponsor? This is the gravity rule, this is very natural role. You very easily see on this diagram who is the sponsor, the natural role of sponsor. You don't have to be specialist on management or whatever. So just the guy on the top. So this is the gravity rule here. It's not, it's not changing depending on the organization, but the way it will be performed and expressed, yes, of course, absolutely. Thank you very much. You. Have a good day. And guys, if you have any concrete questions that you would like to ask and you don't have time, you have this application, but please, I'm human. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm not here just to have my time and make my emails, so I'm for you. So please, if you have anything, feel free. I'm, I'm just happy to, to talk. Thank you. Thank you.